So my full thought was the unfortunate reality is that, you know, as I travel throughout the globe, people think that hip hop is black America, right? Um, or rap is black America and anybody can rap. So rap does not actually make you a part of hip hop because anybody can just pick up a mic. Anybody can start rhyming. Anybody can have this skill set. But what is hip hop is the question because hip hop was a movement, a revolution. It was a culture, right? It was music, it was dance, it was bebop, it was DJing, right? It was defiance, right? And it was expression, right? Um, specifically to push culture forward. It was a, a narration of, you know, the social realities that people face with daily, right? So hip hop is the thing the essence that this industry and this business has built around right and so um you talking about so many different people now that get to say that they are a part of the culture because they can rap but they don't represent hip hop right which is an interesting thing and the question is what is hip hop and what's not and the problem is, is that hip hop has has um, allowed any and everybody to be a part of it that can rhyme, right? Whether your background matches, whether your movement, whether your energy, whether your spirit, whether you have any knowledge of it, whether anything matters. Like you can be some skinny kid that, you know, f put on face tattoos from suburbia in America that talk about killing their parents and you're rapping, you're a part of this new, this thing we call hip hop, right? And so when that gets pushed out and the world sees a representation of what was the essence and core, which was, was actually attached to black America as a culture, and we respected that and we allowed that in, now anything attached to rapping and this music industry is now being misrepresenting hip hop and being pushed out to the rest of the world. And that's being represented as the culture, right? Which is a representation of your identity when you go out in the world and people look at you and recognize you, right? So whether you go out in the UK, oh, you're a black American, we know your culture, right? But it's not because the, 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 the essence, right, of the musicians that represent hip hop today are not the ones that get the play, right? So one cannot say that, you know, Pound Town is hip hop. You can't. Or maybe some people could make a case to say that it can. They go say, well, this sounds like Uncle Luke, right? The question is what is and what isn't. And without creating a standard, right? And without creating a separation, then you allow anything one cannot say suki hana is hip-hop right she say eating his eating his eating his over and over again and that's hip-hop and so what i was thinking of because she actually sparked this with her honesty she said something that was key she said i am an adult entertainer and you know i just happen to to rap right and because she become popular with this polarizing character, that people are now giving her the same responsibility as somebody who is a legit artist, right, in hip hop. And she's saying, I am nothing, I am not that. And no other point in time where we would be so confused to have a standard for a porn star or a adult entertainer, except now when that porn star starts to rap. And then that becomes hip hop. And so now you take attachment to this hip hop artist and you say that you are now, you know, an influence and a role model and a representation of black culture when you are not your representation of the adult entertainment culture. And what we have not learned how to do is separate and it's causing everybody to get caught up in the same pile of BS. Right. And so and the, 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 the people who get it the worst is the overall brand of black America. Right. When the, and the here's the important part is that's not our brand at all. 
Historically, that has not been our brand for the last 100 years, right? She is. She said to herself that she's an adult entertainer. That's what porn stars are, right? She SD on camera. You know what I mean? She give me head on camera. She's peeing on camera. She doing lewd acts for money, sexually nude on camera. That's porn. I'm not sure what other way to put it in. So it's not coming after anybody. I'm using her truth that she spoke as an example, which actually opens up the door for more understanding. So there's nothing to defend or there's no reason to be offended in this case. You just have to take truth for truth. She said she is low down. She said she is disgusting. She said she is nothing. I would not say those things about the sister. I am only repeating what she said. And most time people say that they love these people is because they walk in their truth. So then a person should be able to define a person by what they consider to be their truth. Now, if that's something that you honor and that's something that you like, you have to internalize why that is for you. So we go forward with it and we look at what does actually, if we looking at an honest and a more honest depiction and representation of black America and culture, right? And I would look at it, number one, hip hop would not be an honest characterization. Hip hop in its essence would be a narrator of what the culture of hip hop or the culture of black America in its essence is and was. But the hip hop was only a narrator. It was not a, it was not a generator of culture, and it was not supposed to be the generator of culture, right? So, when you go back to early ages of Rakim, you go back to, you know, KRS ones and you know Wu Tang Clan. They didn't create the culture of, you know, the five percenters. They didn't create the culture of Islam and. Hey, peace, God. They didn't create that. They spread it what was already a culture and was already a part of the, you know, consciousness of black America. Right. They didn't create it. Right. And this is important to understand because now hip hop is creating culture or a degenerative culture more so. Right. So when we go back to that and we say, OK what was going on we had social change we had leaders revolutionaries inventors right we had you know entrepreneurs we had people leading theological and religious movements and the biggest export and the biggest gift that we've gathered to give the world is how to fight how to lead and how to create social change Right. And this is important to understand. So if a people across the planet, like I just came back from Ghana. So when I went over to Ghana, the representation shouldn't be, oh, you're similar to a rapper. Right. Because I went and I went and talked to uh, a secretary. She was a secretary of like the she was the secretary of the president's assistant. Right. So. His go-to man, that was his secretary. She didn't know who Malcolm X was. But she knew 50 Cent is, right? And so 50 Cent is more of a representation to black America than Malcolm X. <laughs> right? And so you have to understand that you're not viewed by Malcolm X. You're viewed by 50 Cent. Because that's what they know of black American culture. So now you're starting backwards, right? And so you have to remember that the brand is the associations that's made, right? So all of the associations that are made and now, you know, uh, social media, right? Is making the associations even worse because social media associates it to broken family, agenda wars, baby mama culture, you know, uh, pimping and prostitution culture today, drill music, is the associations of how people view you as being skewed even worse, not because of hip hop, but because of the industry. Right? Because if the original essence of hip hop is exported around the world, think about how more respectable your representation would be because of the attachments that's curated in connection to how people view and see you. 
Just think about that. So there's a lot of damage that's happening by the industry, and I won't call that hip hop. Right? I won't call that hip hop. That's not. That's the industry. And then the question becomes who controls the industry? It doesn't look like the people who make the music. So that's not a representation of black culture, it's a representation of their culture. This is what you gotta understand, and this is what we've been we've been confused and fooled when we see the degenerative behavior today in society. That is not a representation of black culture at all. It's a representation of the label heads, the executives, the people who put the money behind it. That's their culture. That's the product of their dollar being disseminated and brought into life. That's not our culture. Because if we take, if I was to intentionally take all my money, and if I had billions, and I go find the worst of the white culture, I go find the worst of white uh, of white society, the worst of you know Latinx society, the worst of of um, you know Jewish society, the worst of Asian society, and I say I want to enhance your voice, I'm going to find the most degenerate of you around, and I'm going to put money behind you, and I want that sound to represent your culture. That's not a representation of those people. That's a representation of me and my capitalistic agenda and who I am, right? And so we are being confused as if we are not making advancements and we are not a good or great people is because of what they are pushing as a representation of us when that's not who we are. People know that they're not going home and being that, but what's happening is they're allowing that to influence them so they're mimicking the behavior of those who are controlling the representation of what's being known as the brand of culture. You know, so now we're confused because even when we make progress, what they show us as a representation of us is not a representation of their progress. So we like, are we going anywhere? When well, yes, we are. This is why when I tour, I can do sold out shows because it's a representation of where we are. If it was just people liking the ignorance, then they wouldn't come up to a theater with a thousand plus people, right, to sit and hear knowledge, to sit and hear change and inspiration, right? They wouldn't come there for that. It wouldn't be millions of views, almost going up to 40 million views on high level conversations. But that's the culture. So, you know, it's, it's very uh, unfortunate and that the biggest issue is not even the fact that black Americans are confused. The, the fact that the world is being misled and confused on what the true culture is. And that is not a good thing because, you know, you have to understand that most people will not, most people will not do their own research, right? Like most people in America, black people in America, everybody, most of us not even conscious. 85% of us don't have consciousness to think for self. They, they be, they are led by narratives and what's being sold to them, right? So how do you then expect people from another country to go behind the scenes to figure out what's really happening? Who are the real people? How could they, right? When people of our own culture don't know, you know or don't even have that level of intellect and intelligence. So it's very hard to have that expectation of others to see us in our proper representation, right? When we're allowing misrepresentation to be our brand. So this is what my take has been from coming from this Ghana trip and looking at this thing and I'm like, wow, it's so confusing to the rest of the world. And it's confusing to us because Unless we control media, and unless we control our brand and our representation of brand, our progress, right, is 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 being misrepresented as degenerative. So I'm like, you know, uh, you know, our true history. Uh, most people don't know. There's, you know, there's a lot of black people in America don't know who Farrakhan is. A lot of Africans don't know who Farrakhan is. Brazilians. People all throughout the world, 
you know, and that that that's such an unfortunate reality because we would know about a rapper that is probably a terrible person in real life with mid lyrics and the, like just whack as hell. But we won't know about a person who has been leading one of the, the, the biggest cultural revolutions and and who has been a mainstay for years, 90 years now. He's 90 years old and been doing this for 60 years and people don't even know who he is. So that's the misrepresentation of our history because there's no way that white America would allow that to happen ever. No matter whether they agree with them or disagree with them, they want to allow part of their history to be erased because this is how they learn and evolve and how they move forward. But we allow these things to happen and we wonder why people treat us however they want to because we allow them to curate to us who we are. <laughs> we allow them to put the image as if this is a mirror and they put it in front of you and say, that's you. And you're like, that ain't me. No, they putting images in your mirror and it's not you. You understand me? So this is why we misrepresent it because they take the lowest common denominator, the lowest parts of our culture and they exhort it to the top and say, that's you. The richest black man in America, Robert Smith, he got it off being an engineer. He got it off networking and building. He didn't get it off hip hop. He got it off business. But how is that not a branded in the culture? All right? Because we have taken entertainment as reality. We have taken it as like it is actually something that is real and entertainment and entertainers were not supposed to be that high on the pyramid. And that's the problem. The entertainers are higher than y'all. Y'all don't like religion, but that we put entertainers higher than the religious leaders. Y'all was better when y'all had God because now these fools is on demon time. You know what I'm saying? Now they're higher than, you know, and, and when you go to uh, Egypt and you looked at the Egypt pyramid of leaders, you got the Pharaoh at the top, that's the leader right then you had coming down you had like you know the priest you have the military then you had like you know the, the the entertainers and things of that nature then you had like the slaves and stuff like that but at at the top of us it's like entertainers of the pharaohs of today <laughs> not leading the people out you know what i'm saying but leading them into the babylon you feel me so this is why we're, we're confused and so like what we do on the education side, the financial revolutionaries, you know, um, and at this point, everybody knows who the most valuable people in the culture are. We know that, but ask yourself, why aren't they making those investments though? How could, how could you be sitting there just watching these young men and women do brilliant things and say, I want to be a part of that because the game is, the game is not to give you unfiltered power and control to grow and do something that's going to be good for the culture. Not unless what? We get to own that and we get to have a say so in how you do it, which means we get to have control over you. But why would you want to have control and mitigate these voices from doing something progressive? Hmm. That's the question. One of the things, and, I, and I'm going to leave on this because I want to stay on topic. And I rock with some of the foundation of Black American movement. But you got to understand, and this is what you all are missing. Because y'all act like y'all got a problem with Africans, and this is crazy. Right? Y'all act like that's your enemy, and it's not at all. It's only a distraction. It's the way the devil wants you to move. That's not at all. Because what you also going to miss out is the opportunity to do business. Right? It's a very simple, logical thing. All of the resources are in Africa. They're not in America. All the re You can think about your ego can take you wherever you want to. Your ego is not the resource to build a nation. Your ego is not the resource that's going to change reality. No, you actually need resources and you need allies from all across. So speak for yourself when you want to make enemies with your very allies that you actually need because all of the resources are in Africa. That's why every nation and every country goes to Africa. What I just broke down was the reason why they may be misrepresented on what the actual culture is, but that's not your fault or their fault. It's the industry. 
And if you allow the industry to continue to represent us, right, then you can't be mad at people who are confused, you know, by misrepresentation. And it's like, damn, well, I thought that was y'all. My bad, y'all ain't say nothing. And when y'all do have people that represent y'all, how come y'all not supporting and exalting them so we not confused about who y'all really are? I'm just want, I want to understand it. No, you go out there, build with the brothers out there. Do business with them. Have conversations with them. Don't make enemies when you don't have enough friends. Doesn't make any sense. We go over there and ask the brothers, okay, what trade can we do? What businesses can we do? You know, what, what, what can we learn from each other? You know, like, what resources do you have? How can I put my education to work? It's a partnership. It's not no personal thing, you know? And nobody is begging all of black America to go to Africa because Africa got enough Africans already. Don't need you. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, if you're not doing anything with your opportunities in America, what makes you think people need that same mindset to go travel the world? I just want to understand. So I was taught that heaven is money, good homes, friendship, of all walks of life. You have to make, you have to learn the power of nation building. You know? You got to learn the power of nation building because even if black people in America were somehow magically to be able to get reparations, what you going to do, spend all the money in America? Nah, you want to be able to move across this globe as a global citizen. You want to be able to have properties in different parts of the world. You know, and that's going to require what you to actually make friends and allies and communicate with people like grown adults versus... Talk about the past all day. <laughs> if you have a value and you believe your consciousness has been activated and, and, and you are evolved, then how great can you be when you travel to planet Earth to put that into action and prove it? You believe that you are the evolved man today. Go across the planet Earth and prove it because you should be able to get people to follow you. You know, you should be able to activate the world as you go around this planet Earth because your knowledge is real and it's an experience. But if you're afraid that when you go, you're not going to be received. If you're afraid that when you go, you're not going to be able to do anything, then of course it makes sense to stay in silos of complaints where people agree with you because outside of that is the real world. But I don't mind traveling the world because I know my real value. You know, I know that I can change the mindset of an entire world. You know, and that changes things. I have know-how and skill set, right? So that's different. So when you go represent who you are, don't, don't, don't fight against the misrepresentation. Just be yourself. When I go across the planet Earth and they, they look and they be like, wow. I'm so bad. I'm so mad that they didn't show me men like yourself. I didn't even know y'all existed. And that's why they be in awe. It's like the first time when white people traveled the world. It's the same thing when black men travel the world that got knowledge of self and values and skill sets. You know what I mean? It's the same people like y'all exist. Wait a minute. This is different. This that's how they look at us now. Like the first time they seen the white man, like Y'all niggas finally left America. Y'all are amazing. What's going on? This is, <laughs> is mind-boggling. They want to touch you, be close to you, smell you, listen to you, talk to you. But that's not for everybody. Everybody ain't got that value. So if you don't build yourself up before you leave, then you're not leaving with any value. Just stories of struggle. <laughs> you understand? So we got to represent ourselves. We have to be the ones who, 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 and, and somebody asked about the stocks. I put the trade stocks in there because my brother is running a special, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I was inspired yesterday after seeing Wall Street Trapper, man, and uh, he was outside teaching. And honestly, it should have been thousands of people. All of LA should have showed up. And this is, this is, uh, this is it right there. This is it. All of LA should have showed up in Ladera Park. Um, to hear my brother speak because the gain that he gave when I when I say a million dollars worth of game, that's like it's an understatement. It's different. 
but it ain't Lil Uzi in the park. <laughs> so these youngsters ain't rushing. The people ain't rushing and flocking. Y'all looking at it as something different. Oh, you you don't even know the value you missing out on. So when you take an individual like that and you go bring him into another continent, you take him somewhere else. And I'm going to tell you, everybody outside the culture see the value inside the culture. They be like, bro, you so goddamn smart. I don't know how your people don't see this. Because they know that they like, if I had you on my side, I know what I could do. If I had you loyal to me, I know what I could do. But they like, I know y'all ain't going to be loyal to me. But, man, y'all cold with it. My brother Aristotle, the Earn Your Leisure Groups, you know, the, the, I don't even, I don't want to start naming names because there's so many people. My bro Quay and Jay Hu and uh, there's the likes of a lot of different people. And every time I start naming names, people get mad because they get missed out on, you know what I'm saying? So we're not going to go there deep. But just the brothers that's out here literally working to give value. Everything ain't perfect. Some people are new. People are working to do it. and But the value of it is immense. And I need people to treat it like it is such. You know, so this is why we have to create our own industry to represent ourselves so that it can actually be exalted to the heights that it's supposed to be because this is the best representation of culture. This is, at the highest level, this is the best representation of culture that we have by far. You know? And so please, take advantage of your opportunities.